it's 2023 and the world of e-readers has come a long way since the first Kindle hit the market in 2007, more than 15 years ago. Back then, it was simple. You had just one Kindle and you knew you were getting the best. Fast forward to today and with five different Kindle models to choose from, finding the perfect Kindle never has been more difficult. But don't worry, I have all five models right here and I will help you decide which one is the best fit for your needs. From the standard Kindle in black and blue to the Kindle Paperwhite, Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition, Kindle Oasis in graphite or gold, all the way to the Kindle Scribe with the standard or premium pen. I'll be breaking down the pros and cons of each so you can make an informed decision which one is the right one for you. If you just want to know which Kindle to buy without getting into too much detail, purchase the standard Kindle Paperwhite. It currently offers the best value for money and is future-proof. If you have some extra cash to spare, pick the more expensive Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. If you're on a tight budget or prefer the smallest, lightest option for best portability, Choose the basic Kindle. Only purchase the Kindle Oasis if you really want to have physical page turn buttons and the best haptics. And last but not least, get the Kindle Scrap if you want to read with large text sizes on a larger screen or want to do handwritten note taking and are willing to pay extra for those features because the Kindle Scrap is also by far the most expensive. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you got your answer from that and see you in the next one. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's take a closer look at all Kindles one by one to get a better understanding why I made these statements. This is the Kindle, which is the name of the standard model. It's also often called Kindle Basic or Basic Kindle. All of these designations refer to the same device, which is Amazon's entry-level e-reader with the lowest price of $100 US. It's available in two colors, Black and blue. What's special about the Kindle is that it's made with 75% of recycled plastic. At least the black version is. The recycled portion of the blue model is 30%. This Kindle was introduced in the second half of 2022 and is hands down the best entry-level Kindle Amazon has ever released. Same as the more expensive Kindles, it got a 300 pixel per inch screen, also known as a retina display. So text is super crisp and easy to read. It also got easy handling, a touch screen, and a built-in front light. So you can also read in the dark. With its six inch display, it's the most compact and lightweight Kindle in the lineup. Using it is very easy and incredibly comfortable on the eyes and in the hands. Same as the other Kindles, it also has Bluetooth to connect to a speaker or headphones for listening to audible audiobooks. There's basically only one thing missing from this model which is the color temperature adjustable front light. What's that, you ask? For the longest time, the front light of e-readers was just bluish white. A couple of years ago, that changed when warm orange LEDs were introduced. Those allow for a dual tone light color setting. The idea behind it is that the warm light color should prevent any disruptions to your sleep, which bluish light possibly has because it supposedly tricks your brain into thinking it's daytime and getting too much of it right before going to bed might not be good. So the basic Kindle is missing that color temperature adjustment all other Kindles have. However, the science on blue light reduction is not 100% clear and study results are inconsistent. So I'd say it's not really a must have feature. And besides, the Kindle built-in light usually never shines as bright as the light on a smartphone or tablet. So it might not matter anyway. The main purpose of the front light is to improve readability in low light situations. And for that, the Kindle's regular front light is perfectly fine. One other thing you will notice when holding the standard Kindle model in your hand is that it feels a bit cheaper than the other Kindles. It's not bad, but from the material in use, and also from the slightly recessed screen, you can definitely tell that this is the cheapest Kindle. But that doesn't really matter when reading, does it? What does matter though, is that the Kindle's exterior is a little more prone to wear. You can tell that my Kindle was used without a case for some time because it shows on its frame. The other Kindles aren't as sensitive. 
So all in all, even if it didn't sound like it, the Kindle Basic is a fantastic e-reader and so much better than its predecessor. Readability is great thanks to the sharp screen and front light, and handling is convenient thanks to the very low weight and compact form factor. Get this Kindle if you're in a tight budget and are willing to compromise on the mentioned points. The Kindle Paperwhite is the model I'm recommending to friends and family the most because it's the best all-rounder and you simply get the most for your money. It comes at $140 US and has a few things the standard Kindle doesn't have. The warm color option is the most important addition compared to the cheaper model in my opinion. Like I said, it's not a must have feature for better sleep quality in terms of scientific data, but personally, I don't want to miss that feature anymore. Having the option to change the light color is fantastic. And at least for me personally, does make a huge difference in reading comfort. Turning the light color to a more orange setting at night is much less demanding on the eyes. This becomes especially obvious when quickly switching to a regular bluish light. What's also great about this option is the possibility to adjust the light to anything between bluish white and orange. So you can mix the LED colors to your liking, which also works absolutely great. Another obvious difference of the Kindle Paperwhite is its larger screen. With 6.8 inches, it offers more space for your text, so you don't need to turn pages as often. It also has an optional subtle page turn animation, which adds a little to the feeling of reading a real book. The screen is also flush with the bezel, which gives the Paperwhite a more modern premium feel. In terms of haptics and usability, it doesn't make a huge difference for the reading experience though. Battery life is better on the Paperwhite with around 10 weeks with one charge compared to only six weeks with the regular Kindle. When not reading too frequently, the longer battery life isn't really much better because you won't really notice a big difference when plugging either one in every couple of weeks. But if you read much, you will notice the difference and the Paperwhite will be more comfortable in the long run. And not to forget the waterproofing. The Kindle Paperwhite is IPX8 water resistant, which means it can survive a dive into the tub if you prefer reading there and don't want to worry about getting it wet. So the question is, should you pay the extra money to get the Kindle Paperwhite? Well, it depends. If in a tight budget, the Kindle Basic is a great choice and you can't really go wrong with it. But if you have the extra $40 to spare, I definitely recommend getting the Kindle Paperwhite. It's better in pretty much every aspect and there won't be the need to change or upgrade to another model for quite a while when getting it. So if you leave the higher price out of the equation, it's really a no-brainer to get the Kindle Paperwhite. Right now, there are two storage options available for the Kindle Paperwhite. 8 gigs or 16 gigs. Although I think Amazon might discontinue the 8 gigs version in the future, it's still available for now and it's a good deal if it's cheaper than the 16 gigs option. Unless you plan on listening to a lot of audiobooks, the 8 gig storage should be sufficient for almost everyone. Only get the larger storage option if you intend to listen to a lot of audiobooks. That brings us to the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition, which is basically exactly the same as the regular Paperwhite but with three upgrades. With 32 gigs, it has more internal storage, which is nice to have, but to be honest, not really necessary. Just reading normal books, you won't have any issues with the internal storage of the regular Paperwhite. The only situation where you might want to get the bigger storage option is if you listen to a lot of audiobooks and don't want to remove them from the device all the time to make space. The second difference is the automatic brightness adjustment of the inbuilt light. The Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition has a light sensor at the very top of the bezel, which you can barely see and it sets the brightness level automatically. Again, that's nice to have, but not really needed for day-to-day -day use. I personally prefer adapting the brightness manually. The third difference to the regular Paperwhite is the most useful in my opinion wireless charging. The regular Paperwhite is charged via USB-C. In addition to that, you can charge the Paperwhite Signature Edition with a G wireless charger. I personally am a big fan of wireless charging because it's a set and forget situation. Simply plug in the charger one time and then put the Paperwhite in its dock anytime you don't use it and you never have to think about charging it ever again. But as always, 
there is a catch. You need to not only pay the $50 extra for the Paperwhite Signature Edition itself, but also needs to get the wireless charging dock, which is around $30. So that means the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition comes with three added features, but they may not significantly impact most users' experience. However, if comfort is important to you and the extra cost of $50 for the e-reader and $30 for the wireless charger is not a concern, I would recommend the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. Otherwise, simply get the regular Kindle Paperwhite, which is the best bang for your buck. The Kindle Oasis is the oldest model at the time of recording this video. And I suspect Amazon will update it in the second half of 2023, possibly with handwriting features we already know from the Kindle Scribe, and I will show you in a second. I'll put an update in the comments below if that happens, so make sure to check those out. As of now, I'm talking about the Kindle Oasis 3 from 2019, which is part of the 10th generation of Kindles and definitely is the hardest to recommend in this lineup. Not because it's bad, but because the Kindle Paperwhite already does many things well that the Oasis had as unique selling points in the past. With 7 inches, the Oasis screen is only slightly larger than the 6.8 inch display of the Paperwhite. Really not noticeable in everyday use and even in direct comparison hard to spot. It also got the color temperature adjustable front light, which the Paperwhite also got in its last upgrade. And the same goes for the waterproofing. The Oasis also got light sensors, which the Paperwhite Signature Edition now also has. So many of the features that makes reading easy and comfortable on the Oasis, you can also find on the much cheaper Paperwhite. The Oasis costs $250, which is almost double the price of the regular Paperwhite. Having said that, the Kindle Oasis is still a great e-reader nonetheless, because it has physical page turn buttons and an asymmetrical design. Holding the Oasis in the hand feels more natural and convenient, and the aluminum frame also feels much better and higher quality. The screen is also more scratch resistant than on the other Kindles, which is always good to have. And one thing no other Kindle offers right now is the option for 4G connectivity. You have to pay extra when getting the Oasis, but there's no operating cost for it. The great thing about it is that you can browse the Kindle store, purchase and download ebooks without being connected to Wi-Fi. So that can be a great option if you don't have Wi-Fi at home. Just keep in mind that you can't download audiobooks through 4G. The Oasis is available in two different colors, graphite and gold. I personally wasn't the biggest fan of the gold version, but it grew on me over time. The only real downside besides the price is the out-of-date micro USB connector. All other Kindles have USB-C, which is future-proof. Finding a micro USB cable these days can be inconvenient as the whole consumer electronics market is moving to USB-C now. So that's definitely an inconvenience you might notice in everyday use down the line, in part also because the battery life of the Kindle Oasis is shorter than on the Paperwhite. With a couple of weeks of battery life with one charge, it's still not too short and still on par with the basic Kindle. But then again, the entry-level Kindle has USB-C and this one doesn't. I made a separate video which deals with the question if the Kindle Oasis is still worth it at this time. Make sure to check it out if you want to know a little more. In conclusion, the 2019 Kindle Oasis remains a top-notch e-reader, but it's not the best deal anymore. The Kindle Paperwhite offers almost the same features at a much lower price while being future-proof. So only consider the Oasis if you specifically want physical page turn buttons, and its unique asymmetrical design. The Kindle Scribe is the largest and most expensive option in the Kindle lineup and also the one with the most unique feature, handwritten note-taking. Starting from $330, you get a 10.2-inch display with the same high pixel density of 300 ppi as the other Kindles. So text on the screen is as sharp as on the others. Besides the regular capacitive touchscreen, that you use with your fingers, the Kindle Scribe also comes with support for a stylus for its note-taking capabilities. That's something no other Kindle offers at the moment and works really great 
thanks to the very low latency. Writing on the screen feels almost like paper and it's super easy to use. The pen is passive, which means you don't need to charge it. From time to time, you need to replace the tip though. The scribe comes with five replacement tips in the box. Same as the Paperwhite and the Oasis, the scribe also comes with a built-in front light and color temperature adjustment. So readability is perfect in any lighting situation. It also has light sensors, so the screen's brightness can be adjusted automatically if you like. One thing it's missing though is the waterproofing, which the Paperwhite and Oasis have. The Kindle Scribe runs on the same software as its smaller counterparts, making it primarily an e-reader. While the note-taking feature works well, it's not the main focus of the device, as evidenced by its market launch software. However, Amazon has promised to add more features in the future. So make sure to check out my other videos to stay updated on the latest developments. Reading on a large display is a joy. And the long battery life when only reading is impressive, thanks to its 3000 mAh capacity. Writing with the pen, however, can shorten battery life a bit. If you plan to use the pen extensively, I recommend getting a premium pen with the Scribe 16 gig storage option. The premium pen offers more features and can be a time saver. You only need the larger storage option if you plan to read a lot of PDF files or listen to audiobooks. All in all, the Kindle Scribe is the most advanced Kindle you can get at the moment. But depending on your needs, not necessarily the best. The larger display is great, but portability is worse than on the other models. And while it's one of the cheaper 10-inch e-readers on the market, with a starting price of $330 US, it's not the best value for money when it comes to Kindle e-readers. Having said that, the Kindle Scribe is a great option for those who are willing to pay extra. It's my current favorite as it offers a unique set of features that set it apart from the other models. Let's talk about an important aspect of Kindles that I haven't mentioned yet, the advertisement. Depending on your location, the basic Kindle, Kindle Paperwhite and Kindle Oasis are available with an option to save some money by having ads on the device. So what does that mean? Lock screen ads are displayed when you put your Kindle in standby. Instead of a screensaver or the cover of a book you're currently reading, you will see an advertisement which is usually for a Kindle ebook recommendation or a Kindle accessory. Thanks to the Ink screen technology, display lock screen ads don't consume any power, so the ad stays on the screen until you wake up your e-reader. There is also a small ad section located on the home screen that's currently only visible when you scroll down. Just keep in mind that Amazon can update the user interface, so that position might change in the future. If you got a Kindle with ads and later find them distracting, you can request Amazon to remove them for a fee, which is usually the additional cost of the ad-free version. If you're lucky, the customer support sometimes removes those ads for free. In conclusion, the Kindle Paperwhite is the best option for most people, offering the best value for money and future-proof features. However, if you have specific needs like a budget-friendly option, wireless charging, page turn buttons, or handwriting capabilities, then consider one of the other Kindle models. If you want to learn more about each device, be sure to check out my other videos where I go into more detail. You can find the links in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to help support the channel and see you in the next one.